Good afternoon. We lost some form of this, whether it was mini camp, training camp, preseason, about you just being ready to get back. Is that finally kind of reaching a crescendo? I'll ask it one last final time yeah. as you get set to play on Sunday. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, it was good to get a couple warm-up plays in the preseason, uh, but that's all for now. So, um, no, nah, I think I did pretty well. Uh, did miss any assignments, played pretty well, and uh, it's time to turn it loose for four quarters. Michael, do you think it'll be an easy acclimation to go from zero fans in the building to suddenly there's 60,000 fans in the building? Is that going to be an easy reacclimation process for you, you think? Um, so we had a, a lot of fans at home, um, the games we did play. So, um, and the Chiefs was pretty loud, honestly, uh, when we played there. So uh, it'll be some, you know, communication stuff that you got to work on, but that's even with uh, from season to season. So, uh, you know, there'll be communication kinks here and there, uh, especially in the first game. But um, you got to just try to minimize that as much as possible. And uh, I think we've been doing a great job of communicating so far. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes Sunday, but I don't, I don't anticipate too, too much. <laughs> How do you feel like the chemistry between you and Delvin has sort of come together since you guys first started practicing to now? I think it's came a long way. Um, I just met his girlfriend. He met my girlfriend. We went out to brunch. So <laughs> if, if you can take it from there, you get it. So uh, no, nah, man, he's an awesome dude, great player. Uh, he's taught me a lot. And um, I'm, I'm grateful to have him next to me, along with Daniil and everybody else. So uh, now I think we'll play really well, really well off each other uh, this Sunday and throughout the season. So uh, it's just kind of chemistry and building. We'll see some stuff we haven't seen in the preseason. And there'll be some leaks in here and there. But uh, um, it's about building and uh, getting better and run, run, uh, running well when you get to the playoffs. So um, no, I think it's been great. And uh, we, we're, we're having a great time. Michael, what are you seeing from the Bengals' offensive line, and how different is it from when you were in the division? Well, it's very different. The personnel's different. Uh, the center's the same. But um, now, Quinn Spann, he was in Buffalo when I last played. Played him before. Uh, Xavier Sufilo was in Houston uh, when I was there. So uh, I got to play all the interior guys. But, um, you know, from year to year, guys get better. So uh, you just kind of got to take it for what it is on Sunday. Um, it's great to be familiar with the team. Uh, I think they have a different offensive coordinator, obviously a different quarterback. Uh, I've seen Joe Mixon a ton, and I know he's an amazing player. So, uh, no, I'm looking forward to the challenge. And uh, like I said, for me, I played in Cincinnati eight, eight times. So uh, it's a familiar place for me, and that's a good way to break my ice again. So that will be good. You, uh, you provide notes to the other defensive linemen about kind of your experiences going up against those players? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cross Jerry does a great job of just breaking each guy down. But um, yeah, no, definitely when guys have, you know, history with different guys, you definitely share notes. You think you show some guys some things that you think will work. Um, but it's kind of all just going by your feel. Um, schemes change. Those kind of things change. And, you know, with interior linemen, you know, they play different with each other. So um, you kind of take, you know, the strong points from each player. This guy's really strong. This guy doesn't like to move his feet. Here's all those different kind of things. And, uh, you know, you put that into the game plan, but also you just got to kind of go with the flow and see how those guys play together. Michael, when you came here, how much did you know about the tradition of the, the Vikings defensive lines, whether it's a guy like John Randall or um, Jared Allen, things like that? Uh, I knew a, a good bit uh, just from knowing the game. But, uh, you know, Coach Dre is really, really big on the Vikings history and knowing, you know, who came before us. So learned a lot more about Allen Page. Uh, everybody knows who John Randall is, of course, just because he's such a big personality. But it's a lot of guys like Pat Williams and Kevin Williams that don't get as much love that they really deserve. And um, Chris Hoven, didn't know he played here. He played with my trainer who trains me down in Alabama. So um, it's just a lot of different guys that, you know, may not be in the forefront of the media who were really great players here who, you know, deserved us some love. And um, you honor those guys every time you take the field. And that's something Coach Dre has done a great job with us. Michael, what stood out to you about DJ Wanham and where he's, you know, his progression of his career so far from training camp to where he's at now? Yeah, no, he's a really, really hard worker. Um, I think he'll, you know, be a more prominent role than he had last year. Uh, that just comes with progression and reps, though. So, um, you know, anytime you have a rookie who gets a lot of reps, you see those big jumps in his second year. And, um, you know, I think he's going to start on Sunday. And uh, I think teams will be surprised with some of the things he does. He's really, really athletic. I don't think a lot of teams know that. But, um, you know, if me, Dalvin, Daniil, and everybody else, Everson, Sheldon do our job, he'll make a lot of splash plays. And uh, it's just kind of working together. But, um, no, I think he'll surprise some teams for sure. Michael, how many snaps are perfect for you? How many are too many? How many is not enough? Do you, you study much of that, or just where you know yeah, you're at you, your... you kind of monitor it, and you go by how your body feels. Um, I would say it's, it's more so based on the you know, flow of the game. 
So if you get a team and you're up by a lot, um, you know, the heavier guys will play less because they're running like nickel and those kind of things. Uh, I would say my sweet spot is like 40, 45 plays, depending on the floor of the game, of course. But, um, yeah, I, I came from a system in Baltimore where they rotated our tackles a lot and it helped us be a lot more fresh uh, towards the end of the year and into the playoffs. So that's something I'm thankful for here. We have Amon, we have James, we have Sheldon, who's been a starter, um, obviously Dalvin. So um, with all us to working together, and uh, hopefully we all get a hat on Sunday, um, with us rotating, it'll lead to you know not only success throughout the game, but um, also into the playoffs and further. So um, yeah, my sweet spot is probably like 40, 45, but I played 60, <laughs> played 70 sometimes. So um, you know, because we have such great depth here, I think we won't have to do that, and uh, I think it'll be better for us going forward. How long did it take you to, de to determine that, and uh, just you know, and you know, did you talk to about it, and just mm -hmm. a lot of interaction with your position coach early in your career? Or? Yeah, I mean, you study guys and you talk to like veterans. So I was grateful enough to play with Elvis Dumerville, Terrell Suggs, Brandon Williams, Lawrence Guy, Timmy Journey, and the list can go on and on. And you just kind of see, you know. You talk to guys and you see how they feel and you know how your body feels. So my rookie year, I played maybe like 35% of the plays and then like we had some injuries, we traded Timmy, I jumped to like 65 and you know, you feel that, you know, it jumps on you. So um, no, it's throughout personal experience and you talking to guys and uh, it's just having a good chemistry with your coaches and you know, some games run heavy, you know where you can afford to spell yourself some plays, your backup's doing well. Um, Amon's going to do great. James is going to do great. So you spread those reps around. They get better as well. And, um, yeah, you just kind of, you know, take care of your group as a whole. I think Coach Dre's done a great job of that here. And uh, that's something we talk about. But, you know, you got to go through the flow of the game for the most part. Great monitors, or do you ever, like, you know, tap your helmet or whatever? How does uh, that work? You know? So he's been in the league so long, I think he can tell. So, you know, when you see a guy's explosiveness go in and out in spouts, um, great coaches know and understand that. And he can just read your body language sometimes. So, uh, you know, I didn't play much in the preseason, so uh, I didn't get gassed, thankfully. I've been in good shape. So I don't think he's had that chance to do that with me as of yet. But, um, no, I think he's just – you have to read guys' body language and you can tell how they're playing. And, uh, you know, it's communication. But it's on, our, it's on us as players to make sure we're in the best shape as possible. And, uh, you know, whatever amount of plays they call on you, you need to be able to answer the bill. Coach Zimmer said earlier he's a little concerned about the depth um, in various parts of this team. How much do you take that on as a starter that the starters on this team kind of have to carry the weight until the younger guys can, you know, be able to, you know, compensate at some certain point? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, availability is always the best um, thing. So you got to take care of your body. Uh, starts with being in shape, uh, doing the necessary things at the recovery room with the training staff and all that. So, um, no, I mean, when you're a starter, you know what your, you know what your role is, you know what's expected of you. And, uh, you know, injuries in this game happen. And, uh, you know, it's next man up mentality when things do happen. But, uh, no, nah, you got to take care of your body as best you can and uh, carry the load that you expect to carry. And, uh, like I said, I look forward to it. And I'm sure a lot of other guys do too. But, um, you know, like I said, when we get in those flows of the game where James can get plays or, you know, Armand can get more plays, that's only going to help them get better. So just in case something happens down the road, week 16, 17, playoffs, they're not shocked, shell shocked. So, um, yeah, you want to build in that rotation and get those guys experience and confidence and all and everything like that. But as a starter, you know what's, what you're counted upon and you got to lead and answer the bell when you call. From your experience, what does a guy like Joe Mixon do well that makes it tough on a, on a front seven? Oh, he's a three down back, so he's a big guy. But for, for a big back, he's really, really fast. I think he's like a 4-4 four, four guy coming out of college. He catches the ball well. They run a lot of screens um, to him. Uh, they run Giovanni Bernard was there at one time, too. So he is a really, really rounded, well-rounded game, really complete game. He can run inside, run inside, outside, and he can break those long runs. So unfortunately, I've been on a receiving on a few of those things. So um, no, man, it's not one thing you can hone down on. He's a power back or he's a speed guy. He can do literally everything. And, uh, you know, we have a great running back here. Dalvin gets the praise he deserves. I don't think Joe gets his, gets his due. But, you know, with success and with seasons and winning seasons, that'll come for him. But um, no, he's a, he's a threat in each and every one through, downs one through three. So uh, we got to be on our P's and Q's and limit those things. And, you know, when they run screens, we got to rally to it and make sure he doesn't get those big games. Where'd you guys go to brunch? Hmm? Where'd you guys go to brunch? Where'd we go to brunch? I think it's 975. It's out of ways out by the water. I think it's 957. Something like that. Really good food. Really good food. But I need to shout out the Hen House. Hen House Eatery. Super good. 
super good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Good. Yeah, I'm good.